Hey friends, Sky Roby here, hitting you with what is my top games of 2020. I know this year's been kind of rough with, with a lot of things going around in the world, um, but I know that one thing that has really helped me out this year and has helped many, many folks out are the power of video games. And so what I thought I would do today was I would go through my top five favorite video games of the year uh, in really no particular order, well, except for one maybe. <laughs> but specifically, I had a good time with a lot of video games this year. This was a huge um, year for video games to shine, especially digital media, uh, downloads and stuff like that with a lot of people being home and quarantine and whatnot. So here we go. Let's start out. One of my favorite games this year came on the release date of the PlayStation 5, and that, of course, was Spider-Man Miles Morales. Even though this game wasn't a full-priced game, um, or even a full AAA, you know, 50-hour game, I still loved it. A few years ago, The Amazing Spider-Man was my favorite game of the year. I really loved it. Uh, Miles Morales added another character to the story. I just actually added several characters to the story. Added another layer to the um, Spider-Man universe, or the Spider-Verse, as they're calling it. I really liked it. Um, it, it, was, it was a continuation of the same things that happened from the other Spider-Man from a few years back. A lot of people said, you know, it was mostly almost like some DLC, but I loved it. I thought Miles Morales was great. I thought the graphics in the PlayStation 5 were amazing. Uh, the voice acting was very, very, very well done. Uh, and, and to meet some of those new characters and see some of these new bad guys and, and kind of get a sense of, okay, this is what it's like on the ground level of Miles Morales. I really, really enjoyed it. And I would highly recommend it for the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 4. Um, it's such a great game, such a great story. The next game that I really, really loved this year was Last of Us 2. I fell in love with The Last of Us many years ago when I first got my PlayStation 4 and got a chance to play The Last of Us Remastered. I think The Last of Us is personally one of my favorite stories of all times. A very powerful story um, between Ellie and Joel. And this was no different. I thought this story was very impactful. I thought this story was, was, was a lot more in-depth. Um, with, with kind of the difference between two worlds here between, you know, Ellie and Abby. Um, but, but it also showed a lot of human emotion. And not to mention the voice acting in this, in this uh, was amazing. Ashley Johnson again um, um, was amazing. Alora Bailey was amazing in this. Um, I know they both went through some really harsh and very um, hard things to do to prepare for both of these roles, especially for The Last of Us 2. I know their, their workout routine was pretty strict and, and very impactful, and you could tell that in a lot of their acting, and I really appreciated that. Um, the story was great, um, you know, seeing kind of where the next step was in The Last of Us. I really feel, though, with this one, it, it, to me, it, it kind of caps it off, and it probably needs to kind of end right there. I felt that this was a really good ending to, to the overall story of this world, you know, after this apocalyptic event. Um, but anyway, Last of Us 2, great story. Loved the characters, the graphics, the map. Um, I loved how they, you know, changed things up, tweaked things, I guess you would say, slightly as far as, you know, your weapons and your modifications and stuff. But I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it was one of those games that I played straight through in uh, a few days. I couldn't stop playing it just because I really, really do love the story. And the characters just make you feel that 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 impact. Next game of the year that I really, really loved was um, Final Fantasy VII Remake. At first, I didn't know what to think about this game. I played it. I, I've played the Final Fantasy VII games, you know, or game, sorry, um, you know, a long time ago. It was one of the first games I played on the PlayStation. So I really wasn't too sure uh, what they were going to do. I was... For me, I, I know for a lot of us, we personally felt like it was going to be a shot-for-shot shot re retake of, of the original game. But it wasn't. Um, it, it was in some parts, but it, but it wasn't. And, and the way they took the story kind of leaves you kind of thinking, what's going on? What's going to happen next? And I, I really dig that. At first, I didn't. But then I went back and re-looked at some of my footage and re-looked at some of my scenes. And I said, you know what? This was a really good game. Um, this was very well done. Number one, the graphics were outstanding. I really enjoyed the battle system, kind of flowing between the characters, you know, using their, their abilities and their spells and whatnot. I really enjoyed, you know, examining... Um, um, the weapons and the strategies that you could use as you flip back and forth between the characters when you were granted that time. And one of the other things that I really, really enjoyed was the music. I thought the music was great. It was fantastic. I listened to the soundtrack quite a bit on my Spotify playlist. It's one of my top listened to actually of the year. Really fell in love with it. And the one thing that really caught my attention was kind of the imagining of the 3D world, uh, you know, the 3D, 4D, I guess, immersive world of um, um, of all this area, you know, coming from, 
you know, Final Fantasy VII, the slums, you know, it was really kind of linear in a sense, but in seeing this one, seeing the depth and complexity that the cities has to offer, uh, you know, Midgard and stuff like that, it was, it was really neat to see that, see that fully imagined and fleshed out. And honestly, I cannot wait to see the next one. Next one. I know they're in um, development right now, and I know they're really working on it. It's coming along, and I cannot wait to see what they do on PlayStation 5. And on the side note, PlayStation 5, if you have this game and you have um, a PlayStation 5, it looks absolutely stunning and gorgeous give it a shot um again great game this year um another game this year a little bit of backstory is i bought this game at the beginning of this year and got about 50 hours into it and fell in love with it and then they released a better edition so i bought this game the basic version of this game digitally and then like a month later or so i was like oh man i totally didn't know they were releasing a um a new version but persona 5 royal um, the Royal Edition is this year. Um, this is the Steelbook series, which has a few special goodies. Um, this is probably one of my top five favorite games of all times. Um, Persona 5 Royal, I ended up with 132 hours into it. I fell in love with all the characters, Joker, Morgana, Lady On, Ryuji. I fell in love with all the characters. I loved all their stories. I liked this, apparently the special um, extras and stuff, the extra month that they had was really nice and actually added a lot of depth to the game. And um, from, from playing 50 hours in the, into the base version and then playing 132 hours into this version, you can definitely tell where the tweaks are and, and the quality of life improvements are. All in all, it's probably one of my top favorite games of all times um, in my top five. I loved the story. I loved going through it. I loved the day-to-day -day, um, things of the story, uh, the day-to-day -day doings of talking to the characters, meeting the characters, you know, using their abilities, getting to know the characters, you know, the few romance options that were there and getting close to those characters. I really felt like I was in high school um, dealing with these issues that these crazy adults don't want to deal with. You know, again, the kids have to save the world. <laughs> I, I'm a sucker for a story like that of the kids having to save the world. But Persona 5 Royal, I, I mean, I, it's flashy, the music. I even woke up this morning singing Last Surprise, uh, one of my favorite songs, actually one of my favorite soundtracks. I, I really wish that I could find a solid soundtrack on, uh, you know, like the original, the OST on uh, Spotify and add it to my playlist. It's kind of a mixture. So, of course, I got to resort to YouTube to find those songs. Um, but, again, the soundtrack is, to me, probably one of the top soundtracks of, of any video game I've ever played. Those characters were on some of the best characters I've ever played. The combat was, to me, was flawless in a jrpg the options were flawless you get in a rhythm to where you can just mow through things and 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 you get to the point where you're you're doing you get in that rhythm that the story just flows the story flows so well and you don't have to worry about oh well do i do this ability do I this ability it just kind of comes to you and it just the game just made sense to me and it was perfect and i cannot wait to see persona 6 and even some of the strikers that's coming to um, the u.s here in the next couple months so i'm really really excited about that now, on to my favorite game of the year. Uh, I only started playing this series actually this year. Um, I played I played them I played it so much and this was no exception. So my favorite game of the year, my game of the year and I've talked to several people about this is Yakuza Like a Dragon. This is one of my favorite games of all times. I fell in love with this guy right here, Ichiban Kasuga, I fell in love with all of the characters. The voice acting, oh my gosh, the American voice acting was on point, was great, was fantastic, was phenomenal. The music was phenomenal. The story was so good. It kept keeps you on the edge of your toes. Going around the city was great. I started playing, uh, so this year, I started the year also playing Yakuza 0 and Kiwami and Kiwami 2. And I fell in love with it. I love the Japanese voice acting, but the, um, the English voice acting just oh my it just blew my mind um especially throughout from start to finish um the voice actors and actresses were just were stunning the story was stunning the scenery was stunning one of the things i really liked about um this map was the map wasn't huge um it was good size i could get from both sides of the city i mean there are taxis in the game too that can carry you from side to side and from place to place but i felt it was easily i guess the words traversed or easily traversal or However, say it was easy to get around the city. Um, the characters were great. Uh, the stories, the backstories. You get this option in the game that each of the characters, each of your sidekicks that can be in your group, um, you can you get the option of kind of 
getting deeper, growing a deeper bond with them. And it's done in basically five parts for every character. And the more you progress in the story, um, your bond grows deeper and then their story gets deeper and deeper and deeper. So, you know, you basically ultimately have that really tight knit bond and you guys become best friends. Um, and to me, that's and one of the things that's what the game was really about was about family, friends and community. And it really hit home, especially, you know, this time of year when everybody's struggling and everybody's having a hard time um, not being able to see stuff. It felt like I was really playing or I was adventuring with a, with a group of my friends. And, you know, of course, they're part of the Yakuza and, you know, there's all those things that go along with it. But I, I really felt connected to Ichiban. And I, I, throughout the whole story is you feel, you know, you feel a close sympathy for him and, and you kind of understand what he's going through and you kind of, you know, the other characters, uh, uh, Nanba, you, you start to understand, you know, oh man, this guy has, has a purpose and a passion and yeah, Saiko, you understand her and you go, man, she's just trying to make her way through and she's doing the best she can. And she ends up being just this amazing person, but all the other characters, Adachi and, and, um, they all were great. They fit in, they fit in perfect. And again, that's why I'm giving this my game of the year. My number one game of the year is Yakuza Like a Dragon. Absolutely, absolutely amazing. Um, so those were my top five games of the year. Most of them were on PlayStation, yes. Um, it's because this year has been my year of PlayStation. I've played a lot of the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5 games. So this was kind of my year of those games. Um, but I did get to play Yakuza Like a Dragon on the Xbox. It was fantastic. Great games. Um, I do want to give a special shout out to another game that was one of my favorite games of the year, but it wasn't in my top five, I guess you'd say. Um, so this is more of a, um, I guess, a runner up. And that was Animal Crossing uh, New Horizons. It, I just want to give a shout out to Nintendo and thank you for bringing that game um, to us humans during a strong time of need and it really kept some of us connected and um, I've put over 250 hours into the game throughout the year, you know, off and on and that was a game that really helped a lot of us out and I think it hit it hit us at a, at a really good time. And um, so my runner up was, was Animal Crossing New Horizons. But anyway, comment below. Let me know what you think. What were your top games of the year? What did you find interesting? What characters, what stories? And, and, and guys, let's get ready to celebrate 2021 for some more amazing games. Um, until, you know, and, until then, until my next video, you guys stay safe. Um, be good. Uh, love each other. And uh, as always, you know, enjoy playing your games and, and let's have some fun in 2021.